Hey, survivors of the domestic jungle and veterans of familial feuds. Welcome back to the lair where we dissect the most terrifying creatures known to humankind. No, not vampires lurking in shadowy castles or werewolves prowling moonlit forests. We are diving into something far scarier. That's right, we're talking about the dreaded monster-in-law. This guide isn't about your garden-variety disagreements over Sunday dinners or the occasional passive-aggressive comment about your choice of decor. Oh no. We're going full cryptid whisperer on this one, exploring how to navigate the chilling waters of a relationship with a creature so daunting, even the bravest souls quiver at the thought of the next family gathering. Whether she's critiquing your cooking with a smile sharper than a butcher's knife, or her innocent remarks send shivers down your spine colder than a ghost's whisper, fear not. We've compiled the ultimate survival guide. From decoding cryptic comments to avoiding the pitfalls of the cursed family heirlooms, get ready to arm yourself with knowledge and maybe a garlic necklace just in case. Remember, knowledge is power. And in the case of dealing with a monster in law, it's your best defense. So, sharpen your wits, prepare your most diplomatic smiles, and let's dive into the eerie world of surviving your monster-in-law. All right, brace yourselves, folks. We're starting with something that could save your soul, and possibly your marriage, from the depths of hellish family dinners. Tip one, master the art of diversion. This isn't just a tip. It's your goddamn survival kit when trapped in the living room with the beast. Imagine this. You're chilling, minding your own business, probably fantasizing about a quiet evening without the dreaded pop-in visit. But no, the universe hates you. So guess who's standing at your door with a casserole dish filled with judgment and undercooked potatoes? Yep, your beloved monster-in-law. Now, she's winding up ready to launch into a tirade about your housekeeping, your career, or that one time you forgot Aunt Mabel's birthday in 2009. It's coming, like a freight train loaded with backhanded compliments and well-meaning advice. This is where you channel your inner Houdini and perform the art of diversion. You gotta be slick, a conversational ninja. She starts on about how, in her day, they kept houses cleaner. You pivot. Oh, speaking of clean. Did you see that new documentary on the importance of sanitizing your phone? Super interesting stuff. I'll send you the link. Boom. Topic changed, disaster averted. But let's say the beast is persistent, circling back with, that's all well and good, dear, but a clean home is a happy home. Time to level up your game. Pull out the big guns. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. By the way, I was thinking of donating to that charity you mentioned last Christmas. What was the name again? Now, who's going to argue with charity? No one. That's who. Keep this up, and you'll not only survive the visit, but maybe, just maybe, you'll steer the conversation into genuinely neutral territory. Remember, it's all about misdirection and keeping the peace without losing your mind, or accidentally poisoning the green bean casserole. Godspeed, warriors. All right, fellow survivors of the familial apocalypse, buckle up for tip number two on our harrowing journey through the land of passive-aggressive comments and unsolicited advice. This one's about developing a skill that every seasoned monster-in-law warrior needs in their arsenal, selective hearing. Imagine, if you will, sitting at the dinner table. The beast, AKA your mother-in-law, is on her third glass of Chardonnay, and that's when you know the filter is about to come off. She's gearing up ready to launch into her favorite topic, how you're not good enough for her precious offspring. Now, a rookie might panic, but not you. You've mastered the art of selective hearing. As she rambles on about how her child could have done better, how you're not reaching your full potential, or how your lasagna could use more salt, you nod and smile while mentally you're on a beach in Hawaii, sipping margaritas and watching the sunset. Her voice becomes a distant, insignificant buzz, much like a mosquito that's annoying, but ultimately harmless. But here's where it gets tricky. Every so often, you need to come back from your mental vacation to throw in a non-committal, hmm, hmm, or a, you might have a point there. It's the verbal equivalent of throwing a dog a bone. You're not agreeing with her, but you're not starting World War III at the dinner table either. 
the key to successful selective hearing is balance. You don't want to seem too disinterested, or she'll catch on and possibly ramp up her efforts. It's about giving just enough of a response to keep the peace while mentally redecorating your dream home in your head. So, there you have it. Tip number two in surviving your monster-in-law. Perfect the art of selective hearing. It's not just a survival tactic. It's a way to keep your sanity intact while navigating the treacherous waters of family gatherings. Remember, in one ear, out the other, with a pit stop in the who gives a fuck station. Welcome to the battlefield, comrades. Tip number three for surviving your monster-in-law is like arming yourself with a butter knife in a gunfight. Except, in this bizarre world, the butter knife is mightier. I'm talking about weaponizing compliments. Yes, you heard that right. You're gonna flatter your way out of the trenches. First rule of compliment club. Make it sound genuine. Even if it kills you a little inside to say, Wow, these meatballs are almost as good as the ones at Ikea. Do it with the conviction of a televangelist. Your monster-in-law, like most predators, can smell fear and insincerity from a mile away. Now, specificity is your sniper rifle. Vague compliments are the empty calories of conversation. Filling, but ultimately unsatisfying. Instead of, you look nice, try, that color really brings out the non-demonic glow in your eyes. It shows you're paying attention, even if you wish you weren't. Here's where it gets tricky. The tactical retreat. After lobbing a well-placed compliment grenade, don't just stand there waiting for a response. Move on. Change the subject. Ask if anyone's seen the latest episode of that show she hates. Keep her off balance. Remember, you're in guerrilla warfare territory now. Let's not forget about alliances. Occasionally, recruit other family members into your flattery offensive. There's strength in numbers. If she's busy basking in the glow of collective adoration, she's less likely to launch a counterattack on your lifestyle choices. But beware the double-edged sword. Overdo the praise, and you risk inflating the beast's ego to Godzilla proportions. Or worse, making her think you actually like her. It's about striking the perfect balance. Enough to keep her pacified, but not so much that you're committing to weekly brunches for eternity. In conclusion, Navigating the minefield that is your monster-in-law requires finesse, courage, and a hefty dose of strategic flattery. Arm yourself wisely, soldier. And remember, in the war of in-laws, sometimes the pen, or the tongue in this case, is mightier than the sword. Godspeed, and may the odds be ever in your favor. All right, folks. Buckle up for tip number four on how to survive the dreaded monster-in-law. This one's about the art of making a quick exit. Because, let's face it, sometimes you just need to get the hell out of Dodge before the situation explodes like a cheap firework. First off, you gotta have an exit strategy planned. This isn't just leaving a party early. This is like escaping Alcatraz. Every visit to the monster-in-law's lair should come with a pre-planned escape route. Think of yourself as a secret agent, and your mission is to avoid getting caught in a two-hour rant about how you don't fold the laundry correctly. Next up, the fake emergency call. It's a classic for a reason. Have a buddy ready to call you with a crisis that requires your immediate attention. And for the love of all that is holy, make sure your partner in crime is a good actor. Nothing blows your cover faster than them cracking up mid-call about how your cat supposedly got stuck in the microwave again. Now, let's talk about the art of diversion. Sometimes, you need to create a distraction to make your escape. This could be anything from accidentally spilling wine on the carpet to suddenly developing an allergic reaction to the monster-in-law's cooking. Be creative, but also be prepared to deal with the aftermath. Remember, the goal is to escape not start World War III. Another key element is timing. Wait for the right moment, when she's distracted or, better yet, momentarily out of the room. That's your window. Grab your coat, mumble something about an emergency at work, and make a beeline for the door. If you're lucky, you'll be out before she notices. Finally, always have a backup plan. If all else fails, Feigning sudden illness is a universal get-out-of-jail-free card. 
Sure, you might have to endure some of her homemade chicken soup next time, but it's a small price to pay for your freedom. So, there you have it. Tip four in the arsenal against your monster-in-law. Remember, a well-executed exit can save you hours of misery. Practice your excuses, keep your allies close, and for goodness sake, always know where the exits are. Good luck, and Godspeed. Let's get in gear for tip five. In the vast, wild savanna of family gatherings, your partner is not just your mate. They're your shield, your decoy. And if you play your cards right, your personal buffer zone against the prowling monster-in-law. Here's how to turn your beloved into the most effective human shield since Captain America's vibranium wonder. First off, let's get tactical. Communication is key. Establish a signal, something subtle, like a twitch of the eye or a desperate gulp of your drink that screams, save me. This is the cue for your partner to swoop in and whisk you away to discuss something absolutely vital, like the sudden need to rearrange your sock drawer. Training is essential. Your partner needs to be as adept at intercepting monster-in-law missiles as a secret service agent taking a bullet. Role-play common scenarios where you're likely to need extraction, like when she starts critiquing your career choices or questioning your cooking skills. A well-timed, honey, didn't you say you needed help with that thing in the other room, can be a game changer. Develop a roster of pre-planned topics your partner can bring up that are known to capture your monster-in-law's interest and divert her attention. This could range from the innocuous, didn't you have a story about your trip to Niagara Falls, to the more perilous, tell us more about your views on politics. Use with caution. While effective, the latter may require you to save your partner in return. Always position yourself strategically. At dinner, ensure your partner sits between you and the beast. This physical barrier can be surprisingly effective, especially if your partner has broad shoulders or a propensity to gesticulate wildly while talking. Both excellent deterrents. Invest in walkie-talkies, or for those more technologically inclined, a discreet messaging app. This way, you can call in backup without arousing suspicion. A simple message like, Code Red, the lasagna critique has commenced, should have your partner by your side in seconds, ready to change the subject or fake a small kitchen fire, whatever it takes. Lastly, remember the power of bribery. If your partner successfully navigates you through a minefield of passive-aggressive comments and unsolicited advice, reward them. Whether it's their favorite dessert, or the promise of a week where you take on the dreaded task of cleaning the bathroom, make it worth their while. Together, with careful planning, a bit of espionage, and a whole lot of teamwork, you and your partner can turn any encounter with your monster-in-law from a nightmare into a navigable nuisance. Just remember, at the end of the day, it's you and your partner against the world. Or at least, against your in-laws. All right, folks, on to tip six. Let's talk about the magical elixir that has been mending fences and soothing savage beasts since the dawn of civilization, wine. But not just any wine. We're talking about a meticulously curated collection designed to disarm even the most ferocious monster-in-law. Here's how a strategically deployed wine arsenal can become your secret weapon in the battle for domestic bliss. First off, know your enemy's taste. Does she fancy a robust red? Or is she more of a crisp white aficionado? Or perhaps she's into those rare, unpronounceable wines sourced from a tiny vineyard only accessible by donkey. Whatever her poison, make sure you have it in stock. It's like keeping kryptonite in the basement, except instead of weakening them, it makes them more tolerable. Now, on to the art of deployment. Timing is crucial. Wait for the first sign of incoming fire. Maybe a snide comment about your new curtains or a disdainful sniff at your choice of cheese. That's your cue. Casually mention the bottle of insert monster-in-law's favorite wine here. You've been saving for a special occasion. Watch as her eyes light up with the kind of fervor usually reserved for religious experiences or clearance sales. Here's where it gets good. As the evening progresses and the wine flows, begin to weave in accidental stories of how wine has miraculously improved your relationship. 
Like the time you both got tipsy on Chardonnay and suddenly found common ground over your mutual dislike of the neighbor's yappy dog. Or the hilarious incident involving a misplaced bottle of Merlot, a karaoke machine, and a surprisingly heartfelt rendition of Total Eclipse of the Heart. But beware, the wine strategy does come with risks. There's a fine line between pleasantly buzzed and outright sloshed. You want her to loosen up, not unleash her inner party animal on your unsuspecting guests. Keep an eye on the poor. Your goal is warm fuzzies, not drunken confessions or impromptu table dancing. Remember, the key to success lies in the subtle details. The right glassware can elevate the experience, turning a simple drink into a bonding ritual. And don't forget the power of ambiance. A little mood lighting, some soft background music, and before you know it, she's sipping her third glass, laughing at your jokes, and maybe, just maybe, starting to see you in a new light. In conclusion, a good wine collection isn't just an investment in your palate. It's an investment in peacekeeping. With every cork popped and glass poured, you're not just serving alcohol. You're administering a potent serum of goodwill and camaraderie. So, here's to wine, the unsung hero in the age-old saga of marital harmony. Cheers. Navigating the treacherous waters of a monster-in-law relationship requires more than just patience and diplomacy. It demands survival gear. Yes, you heard me right. I'm talking about Tip 7, a monster-in-law survival kit, a carefully assembled arsenal of gadgets and gizmos designed to keep you sane, centered, and one step ahead in the never-ending game of family politics. Let's break down the essentials, shall we? First up, noise-canceling headphones. Not just any headphones, mind you, but the kind that could block out the sound of a jet engine or, in our case, unsolicited advice on how to properly fold a fitted sheet. Picture this. You're in the living room, trying to enjoy a rare moment of peace, when suddenly, the air is filled with the sound of your monster-in-law critiquing your choice of drapes. Pop those babies on, and voila, it's just you and your favorite tunes, floating in blissful ignorance. Next, we have the stress ball. But not just any stress ball. One that can withstand the grip of a person contemplating whether the fifth comment about their cooking will lead to justifiable homicide. Squeeze it, smash it, throw it against the wall. Whatever it takes to keep your cool when she asks, for the umpteenth time, if you're sure you know how to properly roast a chicken. Let's not forget the pocket-sized bottle of your favorite spirits. Disclaimer. I'm not advocating drowning your sorrows. However, a discreet nip can be a lifesaver when you're two seconds away from screaming as she rearranges your entire living room because the feng shui is all wrong, dear. Just remember, moderation is key. You're aiming for a slight mellowing of the edges, not a full-on drunken brawl over the merits of organic versus non-organic vegetables. Ah, the emergency compliment cards. Each card contains a pre-written, glowingly positive remark about your monster-in-law. Feeling cornered? Whip out a card. Did I ever tell you how much I admire your ability to find the best deals at garage sales? Watch as suspicion gives way to grudging satisfaction. It's like throwing a bone to a ravenous wolf, a temporary distraction. But sometimes, that's all you need to make your escape. And finally, the piece de resistance. A custom-made voodoo doll. Now, before you get all excited, let me be clear. This is strictly for therapeutic purposes. A pin here, a pin there, not to cause harm, but to vent frustration in a healthy, albeit slightly unconventional manner. Plus, it makes for a great conversation starter with your therapist. So there you have it, folks. Your very own monster-in-law survival kit. With these items at your disposal, you'll not only survive your encounters, but maybe even manage a few laughs along the way. Remember, it's all about self-preservation. And if all else fails, there's always the option of accidentally locking yourself in the bathroom for some peace and quiet. All right, folks, it's time for tip eight in our survival guide, and this one is a doozy. Strap in because we're about to turn into James Bond meets David Attenborough. But instead of spying on villains or watching wildlife, 
our subject is the elusive and often dangerous monster-in-law. Yes, you heard it right. We're documenting everything. Why? For science, sanity, and perhaps a bit of self-amusement. And who knows, one day these records might just save your ass. First off, let's talk gear. You're going to need a few essentials for this mission. A good phone with a discreet voice memo app, a pair of sunglasses with a built-in camera, because why the hell not, and the most crucial of all, a journal. Not just any journal, though, one that screams, I'm plotting your downfall in the most sophisticated way possible. Now, on to the operation. Your monster-in-law says something absurd? Whip out that journal and jot it down. But here's where the artistry comes in. You're not just recording words. You're capturing moments. Think of yourself as a nature documentarian. But the jungle is your living room. And the rare bird is someone who thinks vodka belongs in the freezer. Here's a pro tip. Develop a shorthand. M.I.L. says, Back in my day we didn't have internet. You jot down B, M, D, and W, I, which translates to Backward Monster Day, Wi-Fi Ignorant. This will save you time and make for a hilarious read later on. Of course, every good spy needs to cover their tracks. If your monster-in-law ever stumbles upon your documentation, just say it's a new form of expressive therapy your therapist recommended. It's called in-law-inspired fiction. They'll either be flattered or confused. Either way, you've bought yourself some time. Lastly, remember the golden rule of documentation. Never get caught. This isn't just about covering your ass. It's about maintaining the moral high ground, because at the end of the day, the pen is mightier than the sword, but a well-documented snark is mightier than the monster-in-law. So, grab your gear, sharpen your wits, and let's get documenting. After all, if you're going to survive this, you might as well have fun doing it. Who knew the road to taming your monster-in-law could be paved with flour, sugar, and a pinch of chaos? Welcome to the strategic battlefield of the kitchen, where your culinary mishaps become your armor against the beastly critiques. Tip 9. Embrace your inner worst baker. There's nothing like a homemade disaster to bring out the sympathy, or at least confusion, in your monster-in-law. Imagine presenting a cake so bizarre, she's too baffled to criticize. Is it supposed to look like that? Yes, yes it is. It's abstract art, Susan. Martha Stewart meets Picasso. Next, let's talk strategy. Invite her over for a baking session. This isn't about showing off your skills. It's about bonding over the mutual acceptance of failure. As you both watch the cookies crumble, literally, you'll find common ground. Oops, I guess we added too much baking soda, you'll say as the cookies erupt like tiny volcanoes. She'll chuckle, reminiscing about her first disastrous Thanksgiving turkey that could have doubled as a doorstop. Remember, the goal isn't to poison her, as tempting as that might be on your darker days. The goal is to humanize yourself through your baking blunders. Let her teach you the correct way to fold in flour or the secret to her moist cupcakes. Yes, it's a hit to your ego, but it's a small price to pay for peace. And here's the kicker. Document these disasters. Snap photos. Because one day, when she starts on about how her Daniel would have been better off with someone who could at least boil water without causing a kitchen fire, you'll have evidence of the great baking disaster of 2024. A reminder of that time you both laughed until you cried over the charcoal briquette that was once a loaf of banana bread. In the end, your willingness to fail spectacularly in the kitchen may just soften her heart. Or, at the very least, confuse her into silence. And in the war against the monster-in-law, every moment of silence is a precious victory. So, tie on your apron, preheat the oven, and prepare for battle. Just remember, the fire extinguisher is under the sink. You know, just in case. All right, my fellow in-law gladiators. We've dodged, we've strategized, and we've even attempted baking. God help us. But now, we're at the final frontier, the ultimate weapon in our arsenal against the dreaded monster-in-law. Humor. Because, let's face it, if you don't laugh at the absurdity of it all, you're gonna end up crying into your pillow, wondering where you went wrong. First off, let's get one thing straight. Mother-in-laws. 
MILs, are the universe's way of testing how far human patience can stretch before it snaps like a cheap thong. And trust me, nobody wants to see what happens when that thong snaps. So, when she starts rearranging your kitchen because this is how it should be done, just chuckle and imagine her as a contestant on a cooking show where the secret ingredient is always vodka. Remember the time she gifted you a self-help book titled How to Keep Your Man Happy? Instead of seething with rage, laugh it off and tell her you've ordered a companion book for her. How to avoid getting pushed into a well by your daughter-in-law. It's all about finding that comic relief, even if you have to dig deeper than a conspiracy theorist looking for clues in a dollar bill. Humor is your shield and your sword. It turns those awkward Sunday dinners into episodes of a sitcom where you're the beloved main character and she's the slightly deranged neighbor popping in for comic relief. Oh, Susan thinks astrology is the devil's GPS? That's a season finale cliffhanger right there. And when things get really tough, start a blog. Call it Surviving Susan, One Casserole at a Time. Share your tales of woe and wonder and watch as your misery becomes comedy gold. You'll have followers faster than Susan can say, but we always have turkey for Christmas. Plus, there's something cathartic about strangers laughing with you at your pain. In the grand scheme of things, these moments of madness with your MIL will one day become the stories you tell at parties, the anecdotes that get more exaggerated with each telling. Remember when Susan tried to baptize our cat because she thought he was possessed? What a hoot. So, keep your chin up, your spirits high, and your sense of humor locked and loaded. Because at the end of the day, the ability to laugh in the face of absurdity isn't just a survival skill, it's a superpower. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, you and your MIL will laugh about all this together someday. Or, you know, hell will freeze over. Whichever comes first. Well, my dear warriors of the domestic domain, we've navigated the treacherous waters of in-law diplomacy together. From mastering the art of selective hearing to perfecting the fake smile that doesn't quite reach your eyes, we've covered it all. Hopefully, you're walking away from this guide with a few more tricks up your sleeve and maybe a smirk on your face, ready to face your monster-in-law with newfound confidence and a hefty dose of humor. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about survival. Whether you're dodging passive-aggressive comments like a ninja, or countering unsolicited advice with the grace of a diplomat, know that you're not alone. There's a whole army of us out here, armed with spatulas and a wicked sense of humor, ready to back you up. So, next time Susan comes over, unannounced, with her latest helpful suggestions, take a deep breath, think of this guide, and maybe, just maybe, Try not to hide her favorite vase. After all, laughter is the best medicine. But hide the vase, just in case. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the wilds of in-law relations. If you've enjoyed this guide, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with fellow sufferers, and subscribe for more survival tips. Because you never know what kind of monster, I mean challenge, life will throw at you next. Until next time. Keep your friends close, your enemies closer, and your mother-in-law on speed dial. Or, you know, blocked. Whichever works, stay strong, stay sneaky, and most importantly, stay laughing.